I'll call this meeting to order. September 19, 2023. Regular board meeting. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. Uh, first on the agenda is the public hearing. Lee County Board of Supervisors will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 19, 2013, or 2023 at 5.30 p.m. in the General District Courtroom of Lee County Courthouse, located in Jonesville, Virginia, to solicit input on a special use permit request. Raymond and Melinda Yutzi have applied for a special use permit to allow a restaurant in an A1 agricultural zone. The property consists of approximately 6.5 acres of land and is located at 25447 Wilderness Road, U.S. Highway 58, approximately eight miles west of Jonesville, tax map parcel 50A20-A. Thank you. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on uh, special use permit request? Mr. Chairman, let me uh, give you an update. Uh, I noticed we failed to get the minutes. Uh, we didn't have those originally and we did not get minutes in here from the planning commission meeting. Uh, this did go before the planning commission on August the 16th. Uh, there was no one uh, in opposition to this uh, and the planning commission voted unanimously to recommend approval. Well, opposition to this, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Well, make sure there's nobody else. Uh -huh. in the Anybody else want to say anything? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? If none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is the departmental uh, report, economic development, tourism, works program. Had a chance to review those. Next is public expression. Is there anyone here who would like to address the board? If not, I'll close the public expression and go on to approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, carried. Next is payroll. County Administrator reports that payroll warrants have been issued. Next is approval of disbursements. Motion to pay the bill. I have a motion to I hear a second. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Next is supplemental appropriations and quarterly appropriations. We just like handle those together. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's supplemental and quarterly appropriations. Next on the agenda is old business. County code read codification. Here we received uh, the update code today. Uh, that's with the changes that they had uh, proposed, uh, everything that's in there. We still do have to provide them all of the changes, uh, amendments, or new ordinances since the date that, that all that initial information went to them. Once that's done, they'll update that, and then we can now begin work on getting that online. Thank you. Next is Lumps and Pine Office on Youth. I tried to get a uh, whole business. 
on business. No, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Just the second one on you. Yeah, old road to old parking lot. I uh, request to take that up in closed session. I had something I wanted to discuss on that in, in open session, and uh, I mentioned this a couple of board members. That sign out there from when Lee Bain was there, mm -hmm. is not really been used to anybody. I was going to propose that either we try to lease that out on a on a biannual basis to some local business, or we use it for the county to advertise things like we've got a fly-in coming up, uh, don't let or whatever we want to put out there on the marquee. But I, I was told by uh, representative of the bank that they were going to remove the sign. Uh, they said they would leave the post because there's power to it, but they were going to remove the sign. He said the sign board will not hold letters. Uh, he was in bad shape and he just said, he said it looks bad there and he said we'll take it down, which that was uh, probably about a month ago he told me that, but they haven't gotten it yet. But I, I'll follow up with him and see if they want to get it down. But he said the sign board was no good. Okay. Okay, moving on. Uh, donated real estate. Dan and I have talked about it and both been kind of tied up, and I know he's been especially busy. We actually have it on the calendar for Thursday for us to get together to finish getting all those signatures secured. Okay. Next on the agenda is county cell phones. All county cell phones have now been transferred over to AT&T, so we're on our network now. A few little glitches here and there, but some of it's just people having to get used to new phones and new networks and do things like that. So. Is the coverage better? Uh, I haven't heard back from anybody yet. I guess it's like we, we did it as a phase deal. We did so many to initially, and then we did a, a bunch uh, the last time they were here, but uh, not, not getting any negative reports back. So. Uh, and just like I said, a few glitches here and there. On that, <coughs> on that uh, subject, I, I, I apologize for missing that conference call that we had with at and but what, what's an update on that? Uh, that was just more or less tying schedules together, uh, making sure we're Scott County Telephones at, look at everything, uh, what the delivery on the polls was. Uh, and talked about the equipment, uh, when, when expected delivery on the equipment is. So hopefully uh, during the month of October, we'll get all that up. Uh, there's one site that, uh, <clears throat> the one at uh, near Turner Shiny, may take a little longer to get the backhaul in from Scott County Telephone. Uh, because they, they've got to get that line in. They've got every, everything set at the other two locations. They're good to go. Uh, and we've got the easement that we needed there at Stone Creek for that pole. Uh, so uh, sometime in September and hopefully have everything turned up by the end of the year. Anything else before we move on? Next is bowl appointments. Building code with fields. Uh, I make a motion to uh, table out. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is Lone Tree Pine Office on Youth. I did try to get a hold of Mr. Coomer again today and he was not there, so I'll try again. I have a motion on that. Okay. I've got a motion to uh, appoint Talmadge Gunter, T A L M A D G E Gunter, G U N T E R. That's in the motion, right? Yes. Second. The motion and the second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So, Dane, it. Only that said. is a youth appointment? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Well, what's your. It says five after this. Okay, um, we had t the two youth appointments. We have uh, Stephanie Fee that her term is up this month and she's eligible for reappointment. And then we received uh, an email uh, from the, the administrative staff at the Monson Office on Youth requesting two replacement appointments. Uh, Melissa Rogers, uh, who was appointed in uh, 
January of 22 has resigned. She did not notify us. She evidently notified them. And uh, uh, Christy Flannery, they said that she was appointed in May of 21 and has never attended the meeting. So they're requesting that both of those appointments be replaced. And then we have uh, Ms. Fee on there eligible for reappointment. At this meeting? Yes. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. So that leaves us with three appointments left. One, one student and two adults. Right. Next is Tourism Committee. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to table that, please. I have a motion to table. Second. And a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is the Woodway Water Authority. I'll make a motion to reappoint Chad Allen. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is Commonwealth Attorney's Fines and Cost Collection Report. Chairman, they had, uh, per his letter, a total of $34,817 in delinquent fines and costs collected in fiscal year 2023. Of that amount, half of that goes to the state. Uh, the other half of the state of the county, $17,408.50. Uh, the board had previously uh, entered into an agreement with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office that half of what the county returned uh, would be transferred into a line item uh, for the use of the Commonwealth Attorney's Office uh, for additional expenses. And that amounts 8704.25. So that would be a request for supplemental appropriation in that amount to that line out of this list. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Uh, motion and uh, I need a second. Second. I've got a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is the Highlands Juvenile Detention Alternative Program Resolution. Chairman, uh, the Appalachian Juvenile Commission, of which the county is a member, provides uh, alternative programs for juvenile detention for its member localities. Each participating county or city receives state funding for these programs, which is routed directly to the commission. The, uh, oh, I was, uh, mm, I'm trying to remember what the BJCCCA stands for, but it's too many acronyms for state agencies, but deals with juvenile commission funding, or juvenile funding, requires localities to endorse participation by resolution every two years, but uh, they will allow if by adopting the enclosed resolution, uh, it would allow uh, that to continue without having to be readopted every two years. Uh, no further action would be required by any of the participating localities unless and until they notify the Department of Juvenile Justice in writing that they no longer wish to participate. So I would recommend adoption of this because, to be honest, they have not been following the two-year readoption program. I think they said the last time they got counties to adopt the resolution was in 2004. So it's just something that's been overlooked over the years. And I guess the state's picked up on it and they're asking if this be done. Also, that resolution number needs to be corrected. Uh, it should read, instead of 20-11, it should read 23-11. I'll make a motion we adopt resolution 23-11. Motion to second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, that stands for Virginia Juvenile Community Crime Control Act. Yes, you see it in the resolution. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't turn the page quick. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing is back at the Fall Festival sponsorship. I enclosed the annual request for sponsorship of the festival that's scheduled for October 28th. In the past, county has opted to be a featured sponsor at a cost of $300. Any 
I'll make a motion we continue to do that. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signal by the same. Aye. Aye. Next is a request for transfer of funds to school board capital reserve fund. You have a request in your package from the school board for reappropriation of excess state funds unspent from fiscal year 22 to 23. Due to the amount of that, that will require public hearing. Uh, and the week that I needed to get public hearings out, I was home with COVID and that's one I did not get. So that will be scheduled. That public hearing will be scheduled for next month. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, to those state carrier funds, they also completed the prior fiscal year with unspent local funds in the amount of $112,487. Uh, per the county's previous agreement from 2016 with the school board, two thirds of that amount, $74,991.33 is requested to be transferred to the school board capital reserve fund and the remaining $37,495.67 would revert to the county's general fund. Any, any expenditure of those funds, once it goes into the school board capital reserve fund, does require action by both bodies, both the school board and the board of supervisors before it can be expended. I hear a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Next is the Jonesville Institute termite inspection. At the board's request, we obtained an inspection of the building. Um, they were unable to access some portions of the building as far as the crawl space and some of the basement, but they did determine, they, he said there was evidence of previous termite activity, but nothing current. But there is some damage. Uh, so uh, that's, that's the point that we're at, whatever you want to proceed from there. What did they recommend? Well, he gave, us, he gave us a price on treatment. If, uh, I, if we're going to take other quotes, I would rather, we, we just contacted uh, Orkin since they were the ones that was selected to do the treatment on the health department building. We just went to them, so, but I don't want to, dis I didn't want to disclose the price that they gave, uh, you know, in case the board wanted to go out for bid or, or get other quotes. Have you looked at that room that I was talking about this summer? Pardon? Have you looked at the room that I was talking about? Oh, I saw it a long time ago. That this uh, that north northeast corner. Northeast corner. What do you think it is? I think the seals are bad. They've either rotted or they've been damaged by termites and let that set down from the rest of the of the building. That's my opinion. That's that's the first thing I thought that the seals had gone bad. But I didn't know if it was from water or what. But. I figured it's the floor doors. Uh, it's more in that corner than it is out in the center. Of course, it may be a combination of both. I, I didn't look at it that close. I just, it, it's easy to spot along the wall where it's separated. What do you think we should do, if anything? Well, again, there's, he, he didn't see any active signs, but he also said he could not access all the buildings. So there could be activity there, but he does see damage that is indicative of previous turbine activity. But even if it is, if it's treated, probably something needs to be done. I mean, if you want to keep the building intact, keep the shore that floor up. Uh, we would have, have you either have to tear it out from the top or get in kind of, I don't know if there's access under there or not on that end. And if there's not, you'll have to tear it out from the top that point you can determine if the joists are good, if they're bad ones, if it's just a selective process, you know, issue, certain ones bad, certain ones that are not. Uh, maybe portions of it could be uh, replaced. It may be that you could put uh, supports under a portion of it and just splice into it. Wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but if you do it, if you double up on it, you could do that. But it's sort of an exploratory deal, sort of like surgery or something like that. You go in and see what you got and work from there. Is that building occupied now? No. No. You know when the last time it was spring? Uh, well, I've been at the central office this time, so 
10 years or more that nobody's touched it that I know of. Dane, did we put that out for bids on the health department? We just got or quotes. The we, got, we got three quotes from different firms. And we selected it over? Yes. I recommend it. <coughs> But we just go ahead and get over and come back and do that. And if you want, if you want to uh, take it in closed session, I'll disclose the price, and then at that time, if you want to vote to do that. But I, I'd hate for you to vote on it without hearing the price. And I'm not saying it's exorbitant. I'm just saying I'd right. rather you hear the price. Uh, will that building ever be occupied? I, I have no idea. It should be. I mean, it's the structure is sound. You know, it, it needs some work, but it could be yeah, utilized. It, it's going to need some work. It, it would need work to be utilized. The the windows, I mean, it, the building was built in 1911. Probably the original windows wouldn't so, use surmise. Uh, most of the ropes and things on them, we had we had them. They some of them had come down. Some we were getting some rain in there. One of those, the shades that was in the building had been pulled out by the wind and, and was getting rained on and uh, when Gary and I got over there it, it was difficult just getting them back up and he had to nail them shut. <coughs> I mean to, to use it uh, you probably get into replacing windows. The boiler system, uh, the school board took that, any any usable parts of that when they moved out. Uh, to, to keep some of their old other boilers, similar boilers, and other schools operating. And uh, so there's no, and there was never any air conditioning in it, but there's no heat system in it either. Uh, so it's just an old seven or eight room, <coughs> eight room building. I believe it's eight. Seven classrooms and probably the office and uh, in the basement. And I haven't been in that much of the basement. Just, down to the bottom of the steps and I didn't want to go any further. <laughs> There's no power in the building. My phone, my, the light on my phone wouldn't shine bright enough for me to want to venture into it. We had a night by then. I think on my phone flashlight. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but see, I've been down there, it's uh, just, you know, not anything down there that you Hey, there's a bunch of old doors and stuff. We grew up sending them up and sold them. That's the option. What we thought was sell there a bunch of school desks in there. They were upstairs, I believe. No, oh, God. We were downstairs. It, you know, it's it's a it's an historic building simply because of when it was built and the style and things. But there's there's a lot of cosmetic and structural issues probably that need to be resolved. Got a good roof on it. Uh, that's that's <coughs> the But I think now it's. Uh, probably more foundation issues that need to be looked at, or, or the, the wood, if it's rot or termite damage, or whatever it is. And actually, <coughs> that building's in better shape than the one you guys moved out of. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things, you know, again, structurally, older buildings like that, and they, unless they've been abused, you know, had water damage or something like that, they're sound structurally. Yes. Uh, solid buildings, but it's just uh, finding an appropriate use. Uh, we talked, it's been mentioned several times that that would have been a big, good place for the historical society to be in, a, in an historical building. Of course, the old church they're in down there is to, they've spent some money on it and, and things like that. So I, I don't know if they would have any interest in it. And again, there's, uh, there's no ADA access. It's uh, in the inside of the building, everything's steps. There's no elevator. Why would you be keeping it down? Because it's historical. Well, uh, listen, when we took down the old school board office, people thought we were going to tear that building down and they were raising cash. I got a lot of feedback on that. It was me, I would sell it. it. You know, Robert, it's an issue. It's, uh, it's having the immediate value to the county as, as for practical use. No. Uh, is there a historic value there? Yes. Uh, a lot of people probably don't want you to tear it down, but whether they want you to invest money into repairing it and keeping it up for years with no use. And uh, again, without 
ADA access, there's no way we can use it for office space or anything like that. It has limited purpose for government unless all that were added to it. Well, the good thing about selling it is the historic value, you keep it because somebody buys it and they probably keep it. And you get it back on the on the tax roll. You get, get it out of And you're not it. Yeah. Get it out of non-profit status unless a non-profit buys it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the thought, too. Next on the agenda, the SS heat pump report. Uh, the four town heat pump unit currently has been having some problems in social services. They determined at this point now uh, it, it does need a call when you call. We had some additional problems. They had a part ordered for it, but then it went down again, and this time it's, it's bad cold. That unit is approximately 13 years old. Uh, a new call is roughly $3,400. It will take eight to 12 weeks to get it. Uh, another option uh, due to the age of the existing one would be to replace the entire unit with a new one. It's probably within five years of expected life as in a commercial application. Uh, you never know. You know, it's uh, sometimes you get more than that out of them. Sometimes you don't get that many years out of them. But it is going to require, it's going to be fairly expensive to, to uh, retire. The new, the new uh, there again, uh, uh, I have a price from the repair vendor if the board is uh, anticipating taking other quotes, then I would defer that to closed session. Thank you. Reports <coughs> and recommendations of the county attorney. I don't have anything to report. Reports and recommendations of the county administrator. Um, <coughs> just uh, the one I have here. Um, so this this is a under uh, reports and recommendations of the board. For my part, the only thing I'll say is I would uh, request to discuss a personnel issue in the session. And if you want to do this under uh, reports and recommendations of the board, then I can't come back over and sit down and remember something that I forgot. <laughs> That I uh, Mr. Leonard, this is in his district. I think he's been contacted about this. The uh, Women's Club uh, had, had initiated this action. Uh, this is their last known request for a bridge name uh, for uh, a soldier killed in Vietnam from Lee County. Uh, this young man actually. Uh, he was born in the St. Charles area. I don't know if he was born in Pot Branch, which is up in Bonnie Blue, those of you familiar with the area, but he did live in that area at one time. Uh, I'm thinking that we did have some relatives in this area, maybe one or two, I don't remember exactly. Uh, his name is Samuel Johnson, Jr. Um, I, I had checked with one of my brothers to see if he could remember when they first brought this down. He didn't. I, was, I checked on a different site than what uh, the, the Women's Club ladies that, that brought the info they brought to me because there's another site you can get information from on the uh, uh, casualties in, in Vietnam. And uh, I found another guy from St. Charles that I knew uh, who would have been about this age and he remembered playing with him as, as a younger guy. So he, he was uh, from that area. And the bridge that they're proposing to be named for him is the one going into town just before you get to the school there on Straight Creek uh, on 352. So that's they're requesting that the county consider that. Mr. Leonard, I don't know if you have anything to add or not. So. Uh, I just uh, make a motion that we accept resolution. Is that number on it, right? Yes. 23-012. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Mr. Pope? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, okay. well, that's short and sweet. <laughs> I, I do have one other thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going under board recommendations, too. I told you to remind me <laughs> when it came to board recommendations. <laughs> and, and, and when you said you had anything else, Mr. Jesse, I was looking at you, Mr. Jesse was perking up out there. He had asked about the Jasper Convenience Center. Uh, we have not started on it yet. We we needed the uh, VDOT permit, the entrance permit. Mr. Collinsworth thought he had given me a layout on it, and he hadn't, and I needed that layout. He has given me the layout now, but I haven't had time to get the permit finished to get that sent to them. But I anticipate having that out probably by early next week, uh, and it shouldn't take VDOT too long to get that approved. They are familiar with the site. They've already been met us over there before. So I think that, and the permit tech was one of them that met with us over there. So I think that'll probably go through rather quickly and then they can get started on the up in that side. And I talked to Mr. Collinsworth about that and I, he said that's what they were waiting on to be done. Yeah. Reports and recommendations of the board, I'm not gonna give you another chance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything. Mr. Cobb. EMT money, have we settled on going ahead and releasing the second part of that money to them? It's not, the last, the last direction I was given by the board was to release high cut. Are you all okay with releasing the rest of their money to them? I, I thought we already done that. I guess I was wrong, I thought we had already approved it. I'll make a motion that we find Mr. Pope release the rest of the money to them. A motion to second, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, circuit Court Clerk Renee Delaney uh, mentioned that they, they got a printer uh, and scanner from the Supreme Court to, uh, I think they're having to sub that out to a company to scan uh, big plats yes. in and now. They got a printer. I think she's getting some pushback from the Supreme Court about when they're going to actually start using it and <clears throat> installing it. But I think she needs some modifications in the deed room office to do that. Uh, can you get with her and figure out what exactly she's needing? To yeah, she hadn't mentioned anything about what they need. So I'll have to I'll see what they need. That's all I have. Mr. Jesse. No, sir. <laughs> Mr. Leonard, where are we at with the jet fuel, Mr. Pope? Tanks in, full fuel, but they're still tweaking it. <laughs> they've, they've had some issues. They had fuel in it for a week and a half. Car readers give them a hard time. Okay. Now, I knew they had a problem with the pump, and I didn't know exactly what was going on. I was a little hesitant to load it with fuel uh, when they first said they needed fuel, and I said, well, the testing it's their job not theirs <laughs> that i confirmed first because i was going to order full load because of the price burn and so i confirmed that if we went ahead and loaded it anything they had to do would not require it to be pumped back out so they said no that, that wouldn't be an issue so uh uh the last i heard they were still tweaking on it i, don't, I didn't know the particulars on exactly what but it's still not operational but we do have the fuel ready to go when, it, when, the, when they get ready we're ready so did you get a full load? Yeah. Uh, the car club is going to hold an event down there. You heard anything else from them? Well, you not know, heard anything back. Uh, uh, I think the authority had mixed feelings about, about the whole issue. And, and it was a little more, maybe a little bit more involved than what it was initially presented. Uh, the airport that they were using out in Kentucky was more of a private strip uh, than it was a public general aviation airport. Uh, uh, so ultimately, they, we had an application or some uh, yeah, an application submitted to the FAA for that, but then the authority requested that it be withdrawn. And I haven't heard any follow up. I haven't been to meet. I haven't been the last couple of meetings at least. Uh, I haven't heard any follow up from any of the authority members on it. And I haven't heard anything from the individual who initially contacted us. This, this question is for you, Mr. Cobb, about the hangar leases. Do you, you have an update on that or anything about 
You know, um, we have a chart, and I can't remember who's in each one of them, but they've sent out letters to everybody saying, are you going to have something here at least half the year? If so, what's your tail number, et cetera? They've got responses back, I think, from everybody. They may like one person. Uh, some of them have said they're going to take it, and some of them have said they're not going to take it. So Mr. Poe and I talked uh, last week, I guess it was, about uh, him drafting a form letter for them to send out to the ones that said they're not going to comply to just give them 30 days to get out. Okay. That's what I was wondering if we were going to have to beat anybody to get somebody in there with a the tail number. That's all I have. Funds, personnel. I'm going to make a motion for going in under 2.2-3711, sub A1 personnel, 29 contracts, 7 threat depending litigation, and 6 investment public funds. Second. Well, motion in the second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? 